Now, the next section that we want to uh, go into then, and we're going to make a transition here, the next section that we want to go into is uh, we did a, a um, we did a focus group to try to uh, better assess what uh, the needs of the church are and and uh, and what they would like to hear, and in doing that, we uh, some discussion was made as to the all the stuff that's going on today, and just getting trying to understand some of the elements that are out there. So we're going to take a stab at trying to open up a uh, a section, and I I don't have. I don't have a, a name for this. Yeah. Yet. No name for it. Because this is, this is, we're, we're going to try this and see if it works. Um, you know, but okay. So if you can think of a name, uh, text us and let us know or uh, post send something us, in the comments. Put something in the comments or let us know. Uh, you know, <laughs> some, something along, you know, Pastor Money speaks truth on what I don't know. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something catchy. I know either, either Tiffany or, uh, or uh, Jacqueline. Jack, Jacqueline will, uh, <laughs> will, will come up with, come up with uh, something. Here. here we go. Sorry, so, it's producer Jasmine. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So what we're going to, what we're going to do, um, well, when I look at the two of them, I see the same face, basically, and it's hard. <laughs> well, they are twins. I, I, they are twins, yeah. So um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do this. The format of this particular section will be that we're just going to take some stuff that's in the news, and we're going to try to understand it within the context of, of uh, the issues that are present and how the church is affected by those issues. Yeah. And, and, uh, this, and so... Um, and so that's what we're going to do. So this, this is normally, this is something that's going to take where we're just going to have an ongoing discussion, uh, because, uh, the, some of these topics are long and complicated, but, um, let's, let's take an example of the first one. So some of you may be aware that, uh, every, every four years, um, <laughs> states have elections and states have elections and they elect uh, so they just like the, the the states are set up very similar to the way that the uh, national government is set up and you have uh, a, a local body of congress and then you have senators and then you have a governor and the governor is the administrative branch and uh, in virginia there was uh, a, a, an election that was taking place in order to deal with that, and Virginia was a, a heavenly democratic state, and there were several things that were going on that uh, were causing people to have consternation, and so the governor, the, the individual who was running for governor, Youngson, um, ran on a platform. He, he focused on a platform where that uh, that talked more about parents' rights and their involvement in their children's education and having some say in it. And the the Democrat governor who was running things at the time in a debate made the mistake, and it was a mistake, made the mistake of flatly telling the constituents of the state of Virginia that they had no business in... Uh, knowing or caring about what their children were being taught. Um, that was not their business. It was the business of, of, uh, of the state. And <laughs> Governor Youngson said, nope, nope, not, that, no, that's not right. So there, that was the underbelly of the fight that then uh, went on. And, and uh, as a consequence of that, a Democrat-run state basically lost the governorship, the lieutenant governorship, and the and the uh, attorney generalship to Republicans. And and so now Governor Youngston had made a promise, a campaign promise, that he was going to eliminate the requirement for um, that the, the schools were teaching. Uh, the reason why it became an issue is because the schools were teaching um, 
uh, current race theory uh, to the students and, and uh, upholding the idea that, that uh, because of one's race, either you're a victim or you're a subjugator. Um, and they were teaching that and they uh, were not in, oh, and they were requiring children to be masks and in order to go to school and uh, and the parents were up in arms about it and so Governor Youngston basically said uh, when he got into the office he said no no I'm not I'm not having that and so he forbade the teaching of critical race theory and other ethnic based um, ideas behind behind uh, uh, how we interact as a society and to be taught within the schools and uh, and he uh, put forth a uh, you know a mandate that uh, the schools could no longer demand that children be masked but that the parents were to be involved in making that decision and the parents would say whether their children could be masked or not Subsequently, nine, <laughs> nine school districts filed lawsuit against Governor Youngston. It's Youngkin. Youngkin, I'm sorry, yeah, hard name to pronounce. Nine school districts filed lawsuits uh, against him for following through on his campaign, uh, basically saying that he's not being constitutional in uh, how he's approaching this and that the school districts are the ones that have the say. It looks like it's seven now. Oh, okay, two dropped. I don't know. That's just what I'm seeing, seven. Yeah, no, that's fine. So Josh is doing some research. I think he'll probably put links up. I've been doing it, yeah. Uh, he put links up if you want to look further into what's going on here. Um, one of the counties which is the loudest and most, most vocal, Loudoun County, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, Loudoun County, um, basically uh, was having issues of just, hi not, only, not only were they teaching critical race theory, but they were, they were hiding from parents the fact that their children uh, uh, had been, so one child was, uh, was um, sexually assaulted and the parents were not informed that the child was sexually insulted. Allegedly. Uh, assaulted. Well, it's been confirmed. Uh, okay. Yeah. It is, In a court of law? It's been confirmed. The, it, it was confirmed. Um, but when the parent went to the school board, uh, a, a school board meeting, in order to point out that his child had been abused, instead of the school board uh, addressing his concerns, they arrested him. He, they arrested him as a parent for voicing his concern. Um, so the parents of Virginia were outraged at all these things that they saw going on, and so they put a Republican in, uh, in, in the three most powerful seats of the state. So, okay, so we've got a couple of minutes. So, so the 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 questions that the this is a complicated problem uh, question but the the questions that come to mind to us as believers is is do we have what what is on the table is do we have um an inalienable right as parents to deter, to determine um, what our children will be taught and, and how they will be dealt with in regard to their physical being and their health in, uh, when we're dealing with our children's education and when we're dealing with, uh, with um, the mechanisms that are used in order to educate them. Do we have the right to assert um, our values and that our values not be contradicted or undermined or do, does the state override all of that and once we turn our children over to the state in order for them to teach our children do we uh, do we give up those rights do you think I've articulated that well enough 
It took a little longer than I'd like, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a it's it's a complicated issue. I mean, I think you can lead with that question. Yeah, and and I think that I think it's a worthwhile discussion. So so this is something that we would kind of like uh, Yelp to participate in. And the question that we're going to start off with then, and we're going to explore in subsequent uh, sections uh, uh, here, uh, are centered around this particular issue. Um, number one, um, do you have do you have rights uh, as a parent that you believe are given to you by God um, that you are the one who has control? over what your children are, are uh, taught and how it is that they learn, or if you turn your children over to an outside institution, do you give up that right? Yeah. I mean, no, I'm not agreeing, but I, yes. But I, that's the, I agree with the framing. <laughs> that's, the, that's the question that we're framing, and we'd kind of like to hear your input before um, we discuss in, in uh, depth um, the position that, that uh, we're going to take in regard to what we believe Scripture gives us direction as to how to address this. It is an important question because this is part of what's being framed by society around us today. That, and this goes back to what we talked about earlier in regard to Gnosticism and, and, and looking at throwing things out that they think are bad and reframing things and doing all that type of thing. This is happening on multiple levels, and this is one level that it's happening on is that the schools have <laughs> the schools have surreptitiously uh, been taken over by liberal minded individuals, godless individuals who believe it's the, it's their their job to tear down society and rebuild it uh, with uh, our children who have been brainwashed and programmed. Now that's that's pretty heavy duty, but I can tell you from my own now from my own uh, studies and reading that I remember that uh, when I was when we were addressing I was studying the issue of homosexuality and what have you and and uh, one of the one of the leading homosexual groups uh, back in those days, uh, Globe. You familiar with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Globe. Basically, there was an article in uh, that in their magazine that, that talked about the fact that that uh, the adults of the world uh, were beyond trying to convert to being sympathetic towards homosexuality, but the children were not. Yeah. It's that's and, true. And so they were going to begin emphasizing, um, beginning to teach, even at the uh, kindergarten age and up, that uh, they were going to begin to redefine what, uh, what the family structure was, was to look like. And they have actively, in the past uh, 40 to 50 years, uh, been, been doing that. Mm-hmm. So this is a this is an important issue, and we'll explore it more. Yeah, I just want to throw out there, just uh, as the base for it, um, that we haven't given up um, like the public education system. Uh, we've given up the familial education system, and the public education system was already a giving up of the familial education system. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like John Dewey was a naturalist philosopher, psychologist who basically dreamed up an education system that wasn't based on God and his goal in building, he's the, the prime architect for public education and his, and also the, the master of the Dewey decimal system, right. in case you wonder. Um, but his goal in in supporting this and putting this idea out there that we should have a public education system was specifically to take away familial education. He wanted there to be a standardized education that wasn't taught within the homes because something like religion might be taught um, 
and he was right and that 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 was the case and that that was a good way to make that happen and to destabilize the um destabilize you know christianity in america Right, and, and so for those of you that are history buffs, you might you might uh, benefit from going back and looking at the transitions that took place from an agricultural society to an industrial society, because this is where this all began to take place as justification by Dewey. But you would also be good for you to understand that the major institutions, collegiate institutions of education that existed at the time were church institutions. So your big institutions back in New York are... They started back, that way. Yeah, they're uh, Harvard and Yale and, mm -hmm. and, and all, of those, uh, all of those schools back at that time. They were initially... Um, institutions that were uh, that were to teach the word of God mm -hmm. and the standards of God, and they have uh, been taken over, and and uh, we deal with the, they're now promoting uh, secularism in all forms uh, nowadays. And it's, so, it's important to note, yeah, it's important to note that those education systems have been taken over, much like the church. Yes. I think a large portion of the church has become secularized. And we're seeing that across the across the board with the various denominations arguing a, about secular things um, and making them a part of their identity, whether it be CRT or the the LGBTQ plus um, uh, agenda. You know, like we're we're seeing it across the board in churches becoming secularized, but the public education system was always secular. Yes, and it yes, was always I anti God. Yes, and the it, last point I will make was, here... It was, it was Nazi youth. That, and that there's a whole a fascinating set of books that talk about that. Yep. Um, and the last thing I would mention about that is that you, see, you, might, you your head might be reeling this point and saying, well, Pastor Monty, Pastor Josh, you're, you're, you're really into... Um, the, the, the thing is, is keep in mind that all of the, the, the teachers that are trained to teach in the secular institutions are trained by these institutions. Yeah, they have, um, they have some really good methods. Yeah, there are some really good methods and they have, for the most part, I would say that they have really good hearts. Um, there's many, many of them go into education with the desire for the, for the children. Yeah, no doubt. Have you ever seen a, a documentary called waiting for Superman? No, there's a, it's a documentary called Waiting for Superman that deals with the education system coming out of Washington. I wouldn't be attracted to that because it's not – well, it's not – Superman is not real. Right. Neither is public education. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a worthwhile documentary, and it talks about, like, the pitfalls and the difficulties and the rise specifically of uh, private schools and um, – charter schools and things like that because of the failures of the public education system. It'd be really interesting if, in case you're wondering, I don't believe in public education. That doesn't mean I don't believe people can't learn in that system. They right. can, but they learn despite it. Yes. Okay. So we'll pick this up a little bit later. We don't want to go over, but we give you some questions to think about, and then we're going to pick this up next week and continue our discussion uh, then on how do we approach this as believers.